Hey people, what's up? I hope you all are having a great Friday. I am now on spring break, so yeah, I'm going to be living that up. So yeah, I'm excited about spring break. And I gotta say, this this SmackDown was a good way to kick off my spring break, I gotta say. This SmackDown was pretty good. It was a good SmackDown, probably. I haven't seen, to be honest, I have not seen SmackDown in four to... I haven't seen SmackDown in months. So, for me to come back to the show months later with The Rock there and many others, I gotta say, this SmackDown was pretty good, and I'm here to give you my review. I hope you enjoy. So... To start off the show, The Rock opens SmackDown to address the f to address the. Hang on a second, sorry about this damn pop up here. To address the Hershey, Pennsylvania crowd, because The Rock had because st we had story time with The Rock, where he told us about how in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, when this old lady cut in front of him. He created the term candy ass because he told her if you do not drop that candy bar or something like that, he will kick her candy ass. I don't know. Some goofy fan like that. But anyway, though, supposedly, as The Rock says, that is where he came up with his term candy asses. So to open SmackDown like that, I, it wasn't, I'll admit, it was not The Rock's, it wasn't The Rock's greatest promo but, um, I thought it was a pretty good promo by The Rock, nonetheless. I mean, it wasn't great or nothing. But then, during The Rock's promo, no, I didn't really expect this. I mean, I heard about it, but John Laurinaitis. Yes, that's right, you heard me. People power! John Laurinaitis returned, and he interrupted The Rock's story time. And John Laurinaitis basically was offering The Rock that... If The Rock wanted to, John Laurinaitis would be in his corner at WrestleMania against John Cena, and pretty much The Rock said hell no, gave him a people's elbow, and made the crowd happy. So yeah, it was a nice segment. It was a good segment between John, between John Laurinaitis and The Rock. So to start off Raw like that, I gave it a 3.8 out of 5 stars. <clears throat> Next, we had Chris Jericho, Y2J. Versus Wade Barrett. Haven't we seen this match before? At least that's what I thought. Anyway, Chris Jericho won. It wasn't really a great match. It was okay. The Miz distracted Wade Barrett long enough for Chris Jericho to hit the code breaker. And Jericho won. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next, we had Paul Heyman's video on the Titantron where he talked to Triple H. And about how Triple H should be feared that at WrestleMania 29, his career, not only his in-ring career, but his career as the COO and the owner of the WWE eventually could end, thanks to Brock Lesnar. So I gave Paul Heyman's video a 3.7 out of 5 stars. Here, sorry if I'm going a little too, slow, too fast, I'll go a little slower. Just a second. Okay, next we had... Ryback versus Mark Henry in a weightlifting competition, and that was one of the two reasons why I wanted to watch SmackDown this week. One, to see The Rock on SmackDown, and two, because I wanted to see this weightlifting competition. But to tell you the truth, though, the weightlifting competition was kind of boring. Cause it, it, plus, it was just a little too phony for me. Because first, like, Mark Henry bench presses 53 pounds, and then Ryback goes for 54 pounds, or, sorry... Mark Henry bench pressed 53 times, and Ryback was going to go for 54 when Mark Henry blocked him. It was just, it was just dumb. I, I wanted a better weightlifting competition than that. I mean, it was okay, but it could have been a lot better. So I gave the weightlifting competition a 2.5 out of 5 star rating. Next on SmackDown, we had Dolph Ziggler and AJ. So a mixed tag team match, that was kind of nice. So we had Ziggler and AJ versus Daniel Bryan and Caitlyn. And I gotta say, with the Divas, I actually enjoyed this match. I thought this match was actually pretty good. Um, AJ and Caitlyn, I thought, wrestled pretty good. And of course, Daniel Bryan and Ziggler wrestled pretty good. It was a pretty fast match. It was a fast-paced ma match, but I thought it was still pretty good. Um, I mean... Yeah, it was a good match, a nice match. I gave it a, I gave it a pretty fair rating of 3.5 out of 5 stars. 
Next, after that match, we had a promo from The Shield, where The Shield was talking to Sheamus, Big Show, and Orton, and on why they will lose at WrestleMania, and about how they are injustice, yada, yada, yada. I thought it was a pretty good promo by The Shield. I gave it a 4 out of 5 star rating. Next, and now to be honest, this was the only, well, okay, the two bad fans on the show I thought was the segment between Fandango and Chris Jericho. Because I'm, I'm going to be straight and very vocal about this. Chris Jericho is her, deserves a better match at WrestleMania 29 than against a jabroni fan fucking dango, in my honest opinion. And exclude, excuse my French. But anyway, though, this was the only bad match I fought on SmackDown. It was between the Great Collie versus Jack Swagger. Just a throwaway match. I gave it a 1 out of 5 star rating where they both lost by double countout. Since that for some dumbass reason, Jack Swagger wanted to try and make Great Collie tap out outside of the rain. It was just dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. 1 out of 5 for that uh, match. And then after the match, after Jack Swagger beat the crap out of the Great Collie, then Ricardo Rodriguez distracted Zeb Coulter in... Uh, Jack Swagger and then Del Rio and Ricardo attacked Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter and I thought that was a pretty good segment I mean you got to see Ricardo hit Zeb Coulter in the back with with a crutch so that it was a pretty good shot I gotta say so I gave their attack on them a three out of five star rating next we get to the main event of Smackdown Randy Orton Sheamus and Big Show Versus the Rhodes Scholars, Antonio Cesaro, and and Antonio Cesaro. Now this was a pretty good. This was a good six-man tag team match. I thought for the end of the show, a good, a pretty good main event match, with Orton's team winning. And I mean, there was a lot of great wrestling moves in this. I mean, you just saw so many cool things. Like, um, you got to see the Big Show knock out one of them, and then the Big Show went for a choke slam, and then decided to give the opponent to Randy Orton for an RKO and then you see Sheamus give the brogue kick to one of the guys and then he pinned him one two three so I thought that that was a pretty good six-man tag team match a good match I gave it a four out of five star rating and now I thought this was also a great way to end the show so to end the show they had Randy Orton Sheamus and Big Show go up into the crowd and attack the shield before the shield could even get to the ring so they attacked him in the crowd, but lots of fists being thrown. I think Big Show threw a drink at, at one of the Shield's faces. Um, just a lot of other crazy stuff. And I thought that was a good way to end the show. So I gave it a... I mean, I, didn't, I just thought that that was a good way to end the show. So all in all, I thought this SmackDown was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was better than Raw this week, but I still thought that SmackDown was pretty decent, pretty good. And to start off my spring break, I thought this was a good SmackDown to start off my spring break. And I hope it did for yours too, if you're a teenager or whatever. So I gave it a 7.5. So for SmackDown this week, I gave it a 7.5 out of 10 stars. Like my video, dislike my video, and subscribe.